in the previous video we looked at how to take a, a simple model from Maya, make some alterations inside of 3D code, and then take that back into Maya and just check our scale, etc. was was the same and those modifications came through. Um, and I also mentioned at the end of that video about app links, etc. So what I decided to do was just to show you an app link which works with Blender. Uh, there are many different app links that uh, 3D Coat has, which will connect to your particular modeling software. So inside of Blender here, uh, you need to obviously go and set up the preferences uh, and enable the add-on for this. So if you just type in 3D Code, it will come up and as you see mine is enabled there and whenever you install a new copy of blender you will get this app link uh, automatically in there it's not something you have to download so make sure that's enabled and when you're inside of blender just to make sure you should see that um, in the screen properties here you should have the app link settings down here and also if you press n on the keyboard uh, scroll down you'll see that we've got the app link on the, under the end menu as well okay so first of all what we need to do is just to make sure that um, our settings are the same and for this we need to make sure that our exchange folders and texture folders um, are set properly as, as you can see here down below uh, we've got no, no information in here and it's quite important I've already got one set up and I put this into my uh, documents, users documents place. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description of, of uh, the path to to the um, relative places so you can sort of simulate that as well. So I'm going to accept that one and for the text file um, I've already got because it, I've done this before and I've got a folder which is set out there with my textures in. Okay, so just to give you a um, little oversight, th um, here is our uh, your PC uh, inside Documents, uh, your user folder Documents, uh, App Links, 3D Code, and your Exchange folder. This is automatically um, created for you. Um, if not, then you just have to reproduce this. It's quite easy, and initially you may not have any information in here but once you start exchanging between 3d coat and blender then these will get populated with with this information so inside there and you'll have your texture folder as well so these two places inside of blender uh, that you place your texture folder and that will end up in that location so you can see that there so I've made a quick cube model here and if I go over to UV, uh, the UV space here you can see we've got exactly the same going on. Um, so there's our faces selected on there. Sorry, let's just go to... my window there there we go so there's my UV selected okay so it's just you know the default UV for, for this cube has come in all right so what I'll do now is make a few adjustments to this as I did in the previous video and we can take a look at it again this isn't about editing inside of, of blender this loads of tutorials on how to do that uh, so all we'll do is we'll just take the the edge like we did last time and just move it down nice and simple okay back into object mode and there's my object it's ready to go all right so now i'm going to use the um uh, the app link and to do that I will hit um, N on the keyboard and I want this what, what we got to do here is we're just gonna just paint a couple of things on here um, and, and maybe do another 
uh, UV unwrap inside of uh, 3D codes and bring it back over here. So here I'll hit the uh, with the object selected, I'll hit send and then go over to 3D codes. And when I open 3D codes, it says, oh, there's something coming through here. It's got a material of 002 on it. And um, do you want this texture map size for it? So we'll just say yes to that. And there is my object been brought in. So at this point, we're pretty much exactly the same as we were when we were using Maya. The only difference is I'm not manually saving these objects out. I, I'm just giving a destination folder and the app link is kind of pulling all those resources and linking everything up for me. So let's do a few edits on here. First thing I'm going to do is go over to the UV room. You can see um, I explained this last time about the uh, UV. So there's the UV for this object. Uh, and you, if you remember, it's the same sort of layout as, as before. So I'm, I want to re-UV this object now. Now, this is the preview when I'm rolling over here. This is how 3D Coat is going to try and undo this object. Now, we can see that everything's stretched because I made that edit to here. So the original UV no longer kind of holds up with the edit that I made on the geometry, which is why we've got this large red square here and it's telling me there's a lot of stress on, on this um, particular face. So let's um, redo this quickly and then s do a little bit of a paintwork on it and then uh, send it back. So inside of here, I'll use my um, mark seams or mark loop rather and I'll start to chop this up in, a, as in the way that I did before. So again, I'm not fussy at this time about how I'm doing this. I'm just making a different UV map, that's all. So I'll just do every edge that I have on here. Okay, and then I'll come down or hit space bar and I can do an unwrap and it will just unwrap that. Okay, so at least we've got a better unwrap on there and it's more even. So I'll be, I'm happy with that one. All I'm gonna do is say apply UV set, say okay. So there's our first edit. So at this point, I'll jump back into the paint room now and let's bring up our texture editor. Uh, editor there so again we can just see there's our new UV layout over there I'll just pull this out and bring it over here so let's make some quick edits on this object um, I'll just use a simple brush uh, with a standard nozzle on there as well and use this blue color increase the size of the brush on here I'm going to use default pen and I'm going to make some marks so at the moment I've got normal map um, color and also glossiness all active so that means I'm going to be painting with all those three channels at the same time so here I'll make um, an X on there or let's just switch this one over to blend mode redo that so I don't get that build up in the center so I'll put that one on that face and I'll do kind of a dotted line on that face. And you can see how it's placing these on here. And I'll do that on that side, that on that side. And then I've got the bottom and the back face as well. So I'll do a Y on that one and a Z on that one. Okay, just so we've got something on there. Now we've got loads of smart materials and all the rest of it, which we'll look at in the next video. But uh, for now, just to get the basics, this will be enough for us. So at this point, I'm done. 
all I need to do now is go to open uh, file open an original app and when I do that it's going to give me an export geometry and an export textures main dialog it also gives me this export preset so these are a, a bunch of presets that come with um, 3d code and it enables you to uh, bake out these files um, to a specific application so I'm going to use uh, blender cycles for this one uh, you can use the blender app link it doesn't really matter in fact I encourage you to sort of test out how these work and, and just use different ones um, and obviously if you're using a different uh, real-time render like marmoset you can you can use that one so I'll just stick with the one I had before so and at this point I can say well there's nothing in, I have no emissive uh, textures in this and I could just delete those ones um, and also a displacement I haven't got that but maybe I could just leave these ones in so you can see here that now that my um, that my path has been set and I need to set this um, uh, by clicking on it and then making sure I go to the correct folder that I went to before um, that we saw okay it should be already set up anyway so I don't need to do that again um, and I can give it a name and I'll just call it test so at this point I'll just hit export and see what happens so it goes away gives it a name and it exports all those maps so let's go back to our exchange folder and just see what happened so in our exchange folder here, you can see that um, we've got our textures. So we've got an object that's been placed in here and we've got a series of textures, which you can see correlate to what we did before. There's a simple object. So that's great. It saved it out as an FBX and it saved it into this folder. So I've got everything I need. So, so far, so good. Let's go to Blender and we have our object here and let's say get back now at first you may think well nothing's happened it has happened it has done what you've asked it to do it just doesn't look partly because we're still in um, viewport shading mode here and all we've done is we've changed the UV and we've added a texture so with those two things if we're not in texture mode we're not seeing our texture displayed and also we're not seeing a uv displayed at this point here so let's go and check the uv out and see if it's updated that so again i'll set my um, uh, selection to faces and i'll highlight those whoops zoom out and you can see once i selected it it brought in the textures and it's also showing me that the UVs that I brought, uh, sorry, the paint, uh, sorry, yes, the UVs that I made have been updated as, as well with the subject. So that proves to me it's all kind of working as it should. So let's go back to layout here and switch over to a textured mode on here, sorry. So I am in orthographic mode as well, so th that's why it looks a little bit odd. But you can see that my um, uh, the work I did in 3D Coat has come through quite nicely. So that's that's great. It saved me importing all those files and setting up inside of the um, shader tree here. So let's go and have a look at what it did. So here's the 3D app link here and if i click on this little icon in the top corner of that you can see all the work that the app link actually did to bring in those uh, paint files and um, attach them all and get everything set up for me so it saved me a lot of time it is worth just understanding how it works in terms of uh, the previous video just manually importing these and you're kind of in 
get the get the idea of what's happening behind the scenes if something doesn't quite work then you know how to go in there and, and firefight at that point but for the most part that kind of does the job for me and um, and yeah I, I'm, I'm kind of happy at that basic level uh, uh, at the exchange between those two programs so that concludes this quick introduction to this in the next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get a, a little bit more of a complex object and start to texture that one and then bring it in for a render inside of here another note uh, that should be made here is that obviously we are looking at modeling inside of 3d code um, but the modeling tools inside of blender are much more powerful than inside of 3d code so it's important to have this flexibility and being able to jump between the two programs and really cherry pick the best parts of both programs in order to create your own artwork so with that said thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video